Hey everyone, welcome back to another video where I am going to walk you through how to set up the Gravity API management platform to work with your Okta identity provider tool. So if you are looking to set up your APIs in Gravity and you want to make sure that your Gravity APIs have a layer of authentication that this allows certain individuals uh, to access some of your APIs, well, we can certainly do that. Firstly, we would go into your API and we would find the API that we want to go ahead and manage. In this case, we would click on the Okta JWT API. That's just the name of the API that I've given in Gravity. In your case, this will be any API that you're managing in the Gravity platform. Now we'll go into your consumers and here's where you're going to specify and create your different authentication plans. Now in Gravity, we simply want to give the Gravity platform, the ability to validate our JWTs that are provisioned from Okta. So what I'm going to do is create a new plan and then create a JWT plan. And after giving it a name and a description, you can go ahead and tick off that this plan is auto validated. And then we'll go ahead and click on next. Now, because I already have a plan that's existing and set up, I can go ahead and edit this plan. And then I'll click on what you would have clicked on next is going to be my configuration button here. Now, here are some settings that are specific to not just Okta, but as well as to how our JWT uh, is existing and in, in configured today uh, in terms of its signature. So we have different hashing um, keys or different ways to sign uh, our uh, JWTs. As well in our JWKS resolver, we could use either a static key and paste our public key or pull it in from some um, secret storage. We also have our gateway keys that we might have specified um, in our environment variables. And then we also have the JWKS, which is considered the industry standard right now for validating um, your jots based off of a public key in your, in your rotating public key set. So this is ultimately what you need from Okta. Now, before I go ahead and jump into Okta and show you my settings in that platform, uh, the other is, uh, and this is very important, is of course specifying what your user claim is. So in this case, by default with Okta, by the way, it is the subject field um, in or claim rather in the JWT. And then for your client ID claim, uh, this is going to be specific to how we are referring to our clients in that JWT. What is the exact claim in our JOT payload that's going to uh, signify where our client ID can be extracted? So for my uh, JOTs, the sub is going to be the subject field for my user and the kid field or CID field is going to be where our client ID is going to be extracted as well. So what is all that client ID and the subject and, and how do I get to that in Okta? So if you jump into your Okta account, there's two places where I'm going to ask you to configure some settings. One is if you go into your applications and open up your applications tab, we are going to create a new app integration. Now, because again, I already have an application set up, I'm going to walk you through exactly how mine looks like. You can see all of my settings. Um, and specific to uh, how we are configuring this application with Gravity. Now, this application operates under the client credentials OAuth grant type. And what we are essentially doing here is we're creating an application by which all of our JWTs are going to be created within. Now, this application in the context of a normal OAuth application will have a client ID and it will also have a client secret. Now, using the client ID and a secret and making a request to the token endpoint, we can actually have Okta provision us a JWT uh, based off of the client credentials grant type here. And after completing that handshake, Okta will return a valid access token for us to use. So this is all you have to do on the uh, Okta side under applications. Uh, it's just simply creating that application, making sure that it supports the web application type, 
and that it is specifically requesting the client credentials grant type. And then after that, you can go ahead and jump into the second part of the Okta setup here, which is going to be under security. And if you scroll down to API, after clicking on that, you will go ahead and set up your authorization server. Now, if you want to be like myself and use the default authorization server, you certainly can. This will already be pre-populated with Okta. And if I click into this authorization server, you will see a couple of useful tidbits here. Is one, you're going to want your OAuth authorization server metadata URI. This is going to be your well-known endpoint for retrieving your token endpoint. This is how you're going to start making a retrieving JWTs is making a request to this URL here. So keep that in mind. And then as well, your JWKS. This is exactly what you are passing to Gravity in the, um, the resolver field here for, for passing in that dynamic URL. So keeping this URL is handy. And then if you go directly into uh, scopes, there's nothing that uh, you need to add additionally, unless you are using uh, what we call dynamic client uh, registration, which is where you dynamically create applications rather than creating one static one, uh, you will create a scope here. And if I just edit the scope and show you what this looks like, I've named it for us. In your case, it could be anything. It could be an email field or a phone field, um, or it can be requesting like API uh, reading access or writing access or whatever have you. The scope is what is governing essentially your, your JWTs. So these are the settings that you would want if you were to create your scope or opt to force you to create a scope for whatever reason. And once you create your scope, the only other thing that you need to do here is make sure that you go into your access policies and then create an access policy. By default, Okta will not create a policy for you. And so you'll have to create a new access policy, give it a name, a description. In my case, I give it access to all clients. And then once you create the policy, you have to add a rule here. And this is being very explicit and verbose in the fact that uh, we are allowing the client to use the machine to machine grant type, which is client credentials. And that we're also offering uh, the authorization code device authorization, um, and any other scopes within the uh, control of this of this rule. So once that is all done, you can go ahead and create a JWT. Now, I can go into my Postman here, and I'll bring that up. So you can see that we're making a request to the token URL, which is retrieved from that well-known endpoint. Here, my grant type is, is all provided in the body or the payload of my request. It's a post request. The value to grant type is client credentials. You do need to include this. Uh, I've passed in my scope here, which is a value for us. And then as well, equally important to both of these uh, keys here is client ID and client secret. And this is necessary for that client credentials grant type uh, to pass in the uh, information for the application that you are requesting the jot within and then return a valid access token. So simply retrieve that ID and secret from your application in Okta, and you should be off to the races. So once you make this request, you are going to get an access token. Now, if I was to use this access token with this API that we've configured in Gravity, here is the message that we are going to get. We go into bearer token, and we attempt to access this it's going to say 401 unauthorized. And the reason for that is because, sure, we're passing in our JWKS here. We're telling Gravity exactly how to extract the user and the client ID claims in my JOT. However, it still does not know what the ID of the application is that we've configured in Okta. And so that's where the dev portal is going to come in handy. Or you can do this as an owner on the back end as an admin, as we can create an application, which is exactly what we're going to do. However, you could certainly go into the developer portal and then go into all APIs within your catalog and request access uh, using an application in that sense. But if I go into my applications and I add an application here, and this is just a simple application. So this is for us is Okta demo. Uh, this is to validate our JWTs using Gravity and Okta's JWKS URL. 
Now we don't need to pass a domain here. The simple application is going to allow us to specify what our client ID is. And so if I go back into Okta here, I can go back into my applications and open up my applications. Here is Faras's JWT app. This is again, the exact application that we received our token under. So I can go in now, copy this client ID, and I'm going to paste the client ID in this application. So now that I created this application, this is exactly the same process that your consumers would follow in the developer portal. They would self-serve the access themselves. However, in our case, we are simply just creating on the back end. And the last thing that you would have to do as an owner is within this application, now that Gravity has an app that's speaking with the client ID in your Okta um, authorization server, is now going to subscriptions, and we're gonna create a subscription, and we're gonna give it access to the API that we are protecting our job with. Now, once that is created, which it sure is, uh, I can now go back into Postman and bring this up and then go into Okta REST. And so here's the token that we're using and I can go and fire this off and you can see that we can now access our API. And so that's how you integrate Gravity with Okta and use Gravity to validate your JWTs that are provisioned from your Okta instance. And just to go back as well, if you do want to create a dynamic client application for each individual consumer that subscribes to your APIs in Gravity, well, you certainly can connect this to your Okta um, instance by doing what we call dynamic client registration. So whenever somebody comes in here and requests access to your API and clicks on subscribe, they will, or rather Gravity will automatically create that client ID and secret and OAuth application in Okta so that you have a, a, a non-static or a dynamic um, application for each individual consumer. So all of the documentation on that is going to be in the description and also look out for a different video where I walk you through the exact same process and show you the consumer perspective by doing dynamic client registration. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.